Bay Area Congresswoman Jackie Speer announcing this morning she will not be seeking re-election next year. She made that announcement in a video posted just 30 minutes ago. 43 years ago this week, I was lying on an airstrip in the jungles of Guyana with five bullet holes in my body. I vowed that if I survived, I would dedicate my life to public service. I lived and I served. It's been a remarkable journey that has surpassed my wildest dreams. Today, I'm announcing that I will not be a candidate for re-election to Congress in 2022. Joining us now, U.S. Congresswoman Jackie Speer. Thank you so much for being with us this morning for this first interview since making that big announcement. I am sure that there are hundreds of little points of decision to make as you are coming to this conclusion. But what was the one thing that pushed you over the edge to say to yourself, okay, this is gonna be it? Well, coming up on 39 years in public office and a husband who frankly um, has had a weekend wife for 20 years and wants to have me home as do I think my family and my friends. So. It's, um, it was a very hard decision. I love my work. It's been incredibly fulfilling, and it's been such a privilege to serve my constituents in San Mateo and San Francisco. So um, it's tough, I'll, I'll, I'll say that right out, but um, I think that after 39 years, it's probably time for the torch to be passed to yet another generation. When you think back over those 39 years, what do you think of as your best moments and also your most challenging? That's a hard one, Kamasi, because it's a, it's a very full uh, career. Um, in the state legislature, I guess I'm most proud of the fact that uh, I was able to change the child support enforcement laws in California so that custodial parents uh, were not living on the edge and that we were providing the kind of accountability when there were child uh, support orders that have been court ordered but had not been complied with. And also the baby bullet, which we got from San Francisco to San Jose that cut the commute trip in about um, half. Uh, and then here in Congress, it's been a labor of love around issues uh, around sexual assault in the military, on college campuses, uh, dealing with the issue of malpractice at military medical facilities, and making sure that San Francisco Bay has the restoration money it deserves. 43 years ago this week, you had to play dead on a tarmac in Guyana for the Jonestown massacre. Your boss was assassinated. You barely made it out of there, shot multiple times. Then we find ourselves in 2021 in a situation where you are once again on the ground believing that you may die because there are insurrectionists who are storming the U.S. Capitol. I mean, it is almost unbelievable that those words are coming out of my mouth. But when you look back at those two events, not that they defined you, but they certainly had a huge impact on the type of person that you have become. Where do you see ourselves now that, that these weren't, this is when a foreign country, these weren't folks who were a part of an established cult these were Americans, everyday average citizens, who took it on themselves to threaten U.S. Congress members. So, Reggie, that's what was so shocking about what happened on January 6th. I, I was lying on the floor in the gallery of the chamber, and after that shot rang out, I thought I was going to die in my country, in the tabernacle of democracy that we know as the U.S. Capitol. And uh, it was, it shook me to the core. And it should be a message, a strong message to everyone that um, we have got to tone down um, the, the violence in conversations, uh, the violence on social media. Um, and frankly, that's why I believe that Paul Gosar needs to be censored by the House of Representatives because he was, um, basically suggesting that one of my colleagues, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, should be killed and that he should uh, take up battle with the President of the United States. So we have much to learn from those who have been victims of violence. It is, it is not something that we should take lightly and it scars people uh, for the rest of their lives. 
I like in your video announcement, you said you still have a chapter or two left um, in this book of life to contribute. And I know everyone wants to know wh what you see yourself doing in those chapters. Well, I don't know yet, Kavasi, and I guess that's what makes it kind of fun and interesting. I am still going to be involved in our, our communities. I still want to be giving back. Um, I would love to see um, a foundation created for San Mateo County because there really isn't one, and it's a wealthy county, but it also is uh, subject to a lot of pain and suffering by many of our constituents. So I don't know, but I'm, I'm open to all the possibilities. I'm curious, as we look back on your career, as we look back at the way things started, as we look back at Congressman Leo Ryan, if he were alive today and he looked at your career and was able to see all that you have done, what do you think that he would say? Well, he would probably say, you learned well from me, uh, because I did. As short a, a time as the mentorship I had with him, I learned a great deal. Um, I became um, obviously much more fearless because I almost lost my life in Guyana, so I wasn't afraid. Um, and he taught me about experiential governing and legislating. Um, that's why he went down to Guyana in the first place. And so I've taken pages from his book of lessons and have uh, done that with my work as I've traveled around the country and the world, uh, looking at our military service members and their lives and uh, what needs to be fixed. And it is um, why I went to the border when we were having parents separated from their children and led a number of delegations there. So uh, I think he would say that I learned well from him. Oh. Representative Spear, um, a pleasure talking to you and congratulations. Thank you. Great to be with both of you.